you know, it's in John. And John, that, that last time that Jesus had with his disciples, you know, in John 13 and 14, when they're, they're a little afraid and because Jesus tells them that he's leaving. And he says, don't be afraid. I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. This is to your advantage. It's, it's going to get really good. It's going to actually get better than me being here, which is an amazing thought. Right? There is a truth in Scripture in which there's this advantage of the Holy Spirit that we've really got to start to believe. That could it be that a man filled with the Holy Spirit would be able to do greater things than what Jesus did according to John 14, 12? I mean, do we really believe that? Do you believe that about yourself, the words of Christ? And so Jesus was saying, hey, don't be afraid. I'm going to send another counselor. It's actually going to be better for you. It's better than me being on the earth. this evening as a people 
desiring to worship you, Lord, desiring to be changed by the power of the Holy Spirit from inside our hearts. We heard that at the opening from Francis Chan. It's the power of the Holy Spirit that comes upon us that we may be witnesses for the good and the holiness and the purity and the justice of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Oh God, may your scriptures inspire us. May we meditate on them. May we grow and mature in our faith because the word of God dwells in us richly and and corrects us and sometimes rebukes us and and reveals to us and, and encourages us and speaks to our hearts that we may be the people of God. to get real with your God you know maybe there's a time maybe there's a crisis maybe there's an experience but there comes a time in every person's life maybe maybe in every church's life that deep seated transformation needs to take place I do not need another sermon about love. I need me some love. I don't need me another long-winded sermon about the Holy Spirit. I need me some Holy Spirit.
time amongst these people. Fill me. Forgive me. Break the chains that hold me. I need your freedom. God is my father and I am his daughter. I didn't grow up going to church um, with my family. Um, my family's a Catholic and church was just different. It was a, a much different experience. So it wasn't until I became a teenager and I was placed in foster care. And one of the foster families that I live with, uh, they're Christian and took me to their church and it was a much different experience. Unfortunately, my brother took his own life. And that is a struggle I've had for many years um, with my brother and not understanding what, I was hearing different things about, you know, the church would say something about what happened with my brother and where he is now. And there was a lot of struggle with that. I was very, um, angry at the church for passing judgment and I thought that that was what was happening was that there wasn't they didn't understand my brother they didn't know him like I knew him they didn't have that relationship with him to know what he was going through because we had a very troubled childhood I just I think I turned my back on God for a while because I felt like he turned his back on my brother and I felt very um, betrayed God sees me, all of me, and I need to be a good daughter to him. And there was something that we've talked about as far as his role for me. Um, obviously, I have father issues. I had a bad upbringing, and, and I didn't have a good father figure, so I was really searching for that. And I think that being able to understand that he is my father helped me tremendously, because it really wanted me to be a good daughter for him. Once I was open to his word and, and prayer and you know, not growing up praying was really weird for me. I didn't know how to pray. I thought that there was a special skill for it. I didn't know that you could just speak to, from your heart to him and, and that's prayer. 
Um, I thought there was rules about it. I thought that you had to do it in a certain format. So, uh, so I was just awkward and not really comfortable with it because I didn't really know much about it. So I think that my journey began about learning how to pray and not really learning about it, but just feeling comfortable with it. Just being able to, uh, to do it and not feel like I was being fake. He knows my heart. He knows what I am about. He knows what I want. And my honesty with him has shown me that he's listening and he's going to make sure that I'm okay and have the things that I need. want them to know that you have loved them as you have loved me. Jesus is praying, Father, I want them to know. I'm going to translate this for you in the Greek. You ready? For you Bible students here, go check it out. Pull out your lexicon, your strongs. Search it. Vet it. Okay? Jesus, this is what he's praying. I want them to know, Father, that when they talk with you, when you look at them, it's exactly the same as you're looking at me. It's the same. There's no difference. Check it out. That's a hard pill to swallow. Wait a minute, Dave. You're saying that Jesus was praying that we would get this revelation because Messiah came that the love Father God has for me and the way he sees me is the same way he sees his one and only begotten son. Yep. That's it. Doesn't make you God, by the way. What it does mean is this, that he sees you perfect. 